What's up everyone, back for another beer review and today is Black Friday, which means if you're a craft beer drinker who loves barrel aged Imperial Stouts, you're probably on the prowl today for some Goose Island Bourbon County brand stout, whether that's the base or some of the variants. You're probably in line maybe right now, who knows? When I post this, 10 a.m. typically, you're probably in line. Maybe not, maybe you just got some of the, uh, the beer, who knows? Whatever the case may be, I wanted to pay homage to the barrel aged Imperial Stout style today by reviewing one of my favorite within the style, but it's not Bourbon County brand stout. It's not this year's vintage, it's not a prior vintage, it's not a variant, no. It's one of my favorite barrel aged Imperial Stouts and they have a new variant slash edition of it. And it comes from the Firestone Walker Brewing Company and they're out of Paso Robles, California. And this is their Parabola, and this is the Autumn Edition, and it's the 2021 Vintage. So they're calling this one an Imperial Stout. Aged in bourbon barrels, it comes in at 14% alcohol by volume, 55 IBUs at the time of review. This bottle, I believe, I believe is just over two months old, and that's because it has, I think, a Julian uh, date here on the bottle. It's in black font on this bottle, which because of the liquid inside is black as well. But I believe this was um, bottled on September 9th of 2021. And by the time reviewing this, it's just over two months old, we'll say. So anyway, like I said, today is Black Friday. Even though I'm posting this, I will probably be looking for some Bourbon County as this uh, video is being released. So yeah, that's, that's I, listen, I missed out on the 2020 release of Bourbon County and its variant. So I'm probably gonna go out and try to get some this year. But uh, I saw this recently in a uh, limited edition three pack that Firestone Walker put out. It includes this beer, their 25th anniversary ale, and their 2021 vintage of their Sticky Monkey, which is their quad age uh, bourbon barrels. And when I saw this, it said Autumn Edition. I was like, oh, a variant. What, what Autumn Edition, what does that mean? Did they brew it with some like pumpkin spice or something? No. The 2021 release of Parabola this year, they actually put, uh, aged in equal parts bourbon barrels, rye whiskey barrels, and weeded whiskey barrels. So it was like one third of each of those barrels they uh, aged the beer in. So for the Autumn Edition, they said, nah, nah, we're not gonna do that. This is aged in all bourbon barrels. And they're a blend of different barrels, but there's no rye whiskey, there's no weeded whiskey, it's just bourbon. And the difference between this and the base one, I believe the base one was 13.6%, this is 14, so bumped up the alcohol a little bit. And yeah, I'm really excited to give this one a go. Like I saw it, I was like, Autumn Edition, why not? I have reviewed uh, the 2019 Parabola and it was delicious. Some of my favorite uh, vintages, 2014 to 15, I believe the 13, like some of those mid 2010 uh, variants, uh, vintages, whatever you want to call them, delicious. But I'm excited to give this one a go. So let's crack this one open. A Little bit of a hiss there. Now this is basically room temperature down here. It's like 60 degrees, so. I am drinking this one pretty much room temperature and I'll make a good friend of mine and fellow beer tuber Paul over at PA Brew News happy. So let's get this into the hashtag proper glass where this is the proprietor's reserve series glass. I've reviewed these, I have a uh, Teku, Tiku um, as well. And uh, I've reviewed all of, I think the Firestone Walker beers and the Tiku. So we went for this little uh, like mini snifter type of thing going on, or mini tulip, I guess. Anyway, so that pours out pitch black. When it's pouring, it looked like Coca-Cola, but in the glass, a little bit of dark brown, but it's pitch black. Had about a finger to then dissipate to a half a finger of this uh, straight up light brown colored head. Looked pretty creamy. We're trying to generate a head here back to see exactly what it looks like, but yeah. Yeah, that's like a straight on brown color. I wouldn't say deep dark brown, but oh man. The alcohol legs are not legs, they are sheets. I can see them. So 14% all day long. Let's get a nose. Yeah, holy fuck, that smells dynamite. It always does. Like, again, I wanted to pay homage to this one because I pretty much pick it up every year. I've had many different vintages, and I don't want to say people sleep on the Firestone Walker, um, you know, their, their barrel game, but over the years, I mean, these used to be really popular back in the mid, you know, 2010s, and over the years, there's so many places doing barrel-aged stuff. I still think quality, pound for pound, Firestone Walker still in, like, the top three for me as far as, like, the barrel-aged program. Just delicious. Anyway, tons of bourbon, just spicy bourbon. There is a huge confectionery, but like decadent type of malt character here. I'm getting toffee, I'm getting caramel, I'm getting molasses, I'm getting sweeter coffee, I'm getting dark chocolate, sweet dark chocolate. Roasted malt. There's dark fruits here, there's, there's dates, there's plums, there's cherries. It's 
it's just, and it's making my mouth water. That's how, that's how awesome this beer smells. The bourbon hits you. There's a vanilla, there's oak tan tannins, there's the actual spirit itself. It's just punching me in the face. Man. There's a slight touch of toasted coconut. When it comes to toasted coconut, um, you know, a lot of people within the beer tubing community, if they've watched the channel or they know me personally, they know I love toasted coconut. But I've always said I prefer toasted coconut that I get from uh, barrel-aged beers more so than actual real uh, coconut. And one of the beers that did that for me originally was Sukaba. Is it over here? No, that's Parabola. It's over here, Sukaba, right? This beer right here. I always get a nice toasted coconut barrel presence uh, from that beer. But I also get it occasionally in Parabola. In the 2019, I really didn't get it. I'm getting it here, but it's not big. But it has a nice toasted coconut kind of presence. But this one just smells sweet, but not... It's 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 a decadent, more robust sweetness than you would get, say, from like a crazy pastry stout that has a bunch of different, you know, adjuncts in it. This just smells sweet from the base beer, from the barrel, everything. It's vanilla, it's molasses, it's chocolate, it's toffee, it's coffee, it's caramel. It's it's just fantastic. <sighs> it smells so fucking good. Yeah, I there's not much more to say about it. This is a very cohesive, well-blended, just delicious smelling beer. It smells like, if you're talking about like the definition of a barrel-aged Imperial Stout, it's this beer. I believe this is a Russian Imperial Stout too. Uh, nowadays, you know, the lines are blurred when you're talking about Russia. Like a lot of places just put Imperial Stout, but this is at its core Russian Imperial Stout. Cause you, I always typically get like a big, like roasted malt, a little bit more bitterness in this, but um, the barrel kind of dulls that out a little bit. I would love to drink the, the base beer of this, the non-barrel aged version. Anyway, let's get into it. Cheers, everybody. And hopefully everybody's having a very safe and enjoyable Black Friday. Okay, look, I'm not going to beat around the bush here. This is boozy. It's warm. You can tell on the palate in the chest. This is, I think the 2019 I reviewed, uh, it was like six weeks, maybe a couple months old. This is kind of in the same realm, a couple months old. Fresh, this beer is boozy. It's 14 fucking percent. You expect the booze. It's not going to hide the alcohol at almost 15%. You're going to get, you're, it's going to be noticeable. But it doesn't, it's not detrimental to the beer. It doesn't take away from the beer because all those awesome flavors come right after. Let's go body and mouthfeel. Body in this one is like higher side to medium, lower side, a full. I've always said this about this beer. I've never remembered it being like super thick and chewy and viscous, but the viscosity in this beer and the 2019 that I did, a little bit lighter than I remember. This is like I said, higher side of medium, lower side of full. I'd want to see this full body at 14%. Does it deter from the beer? A little bit, but not all that much. It's still, it's still a bigger beer and you can tell it's just a little bit thin. Shout out to Paul. The mouth feels so luscious. It's soft, it's smooth, it's creamy. There's carbonation here. Let you know it's a beer. But on the palate, it's so inviting, and it has such a smooth finish. Yeah, like I said, it's boozy, it's warming, but it's still smooth somehow. I know that sounds weird, but it's true. On the palate, though, it's pretty much what you want from the style. Right up front, you're hit with all the malt sweetness that you ever wanted, and it's so complex. It's dark chocolate. It's sweet dark chocolate. It's sweet dark chocolate mixing with toffee, caramel, molasses. There's just a lot of sweet malt. Underneath that, there's a really nice roasted malt component here. And it lets you know that, yeah, this is a big imperial stout at, at its core. Halfway through the palate, I'm hit with dark fruits, more of like a dark cherry, a plum, a date, maybe a little bit of a raisin quality, but more, it's more of the dark cherry and like the plum um, and date kind of thing going on. And then it finishes with that barrel presence. The barrel presence is kind of kind of omnipresent, but I think it really shows itself well on the on the finish. It's a vanilla. It's oak. It's the bourbon itself. It's big. It's boisterous. It's bold. It's in your face. It lets you know that this was aged in bourbon barrels, and it was aged, I believe, for a full year. So it lets you know what's going on. This one finishes with a mild bitterness. Which, again, if, the, the, if this was an actual Russian Imperial Stout base, you would want more of like a moderate bitterness. But because it's aged for a year in the barrels, you kind of lose some of that, bear, that um, the, the base beer and the bitterness and whatnot. So it has more of a mild bitterness, semi-dry finish. This leans a little bit more sweet, but I think oak tannin dryness, 
dryness from the alcohol, and then that mild bitterness balances out enough to stop this from being a cloying beer or sickly sweet or anything like that. I don't think anybody would drink this and be like, it's too sweet. I think going into this, you know it's going to be a sweeter beer, but it's not like a super, like I said, a super pastry stout or something where you drink like four ounces, you're like, I'm done. That's too sweet. Not with this beer. It's delicious. Here's the thing. I don't think it's as good as the 2019 vintage that I reviewed, but it's close. It's one of these, I think it's a little bit more boozy than that beer. And I also think it's not as robust from the base beer. I think I got a little bit more in that one. But this is a very well-blended, cohesive beer. And each year, it's always it always gets a great score for me. I think I, I, I haven't had a bad vintage of this. I've had vintages better than others. But for something they call the Autumn Edition, and they're aging this one in strictly bourbon barrels, which I think most years, they are just bourbon barrels, but they're usually blended with you know different barrels from different companies. This year, they did the, the one-third uh, bourbon, one-third rye whiskey, one-third weeded whiskey. I would have loved to try that earlier this year, but I was in no condition to give that one a go when that came out. So um, I would have loved to try the, the just the regular version of this, see how it compares. But this is very akin to a lot of the vintages I've had of Parabola, albeit I think it's a little bit more boozy but I'm drinking it relatively fresh. And I don't think the base beer is shining as much as it typically does. That said, this beer is still fucking delicious. And if you see that limited edition three pack, give it a go because you're going to get this. You're going to get Sticky Monkey, which is great. I haven't reviewed that beer, but I will. And then the 25th anniversary, most of their anniversary ales are, are really good. Um, some of them are amazing. Some of them are just really good. So I think it's a great deal. But anyway, uh, I was going for score. So score on Parabola. And again, this is the uh, 2021 Autumn Edition. I'm going to give this a high... No, I'm going to give this, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to give it a low 475. I'm going to go 4.65 out of 5. I think it gets into the 475 range. I think I gave uh, the 2019 a straight 475. It's not as good as the 2019, but I think it's right there with it. And I think it's really good. I think to get to straight 475 or even higher, I want that booze to be toned down, which will probably happen with a year or two of age. And I want the base beer to shine a little bit more. I want a little bit more impactfulness from that base beer. But I think at the end of the day, it's another fucking really good vintage. And it's weird that it said Autumn Edition, and the only difference is it's kind of like a regular <laughs> parabola. Maybe, uh, I don't, again, I didn't look at the like untapped score of like this year's Parabola, this is a regular release earlier this year. I didn't look at any reviews. So maybe people were complaining about the uh, the, the three different uh, barrels. And I have no idea. But uh, the fact that they put this out and put it in the three pack, yeah, I'm into it. So 4.65 out of five, that was Parabola Autumn Edition 2021 Vintage. Uh, price and availability, that three pack was $29.99. So basically $9.99 uh, per per bottle or it just will just say 10 bucks per bottle that's the going rate for these that's pretty much what they've been since they put them in these 12 uh, ounce bottles they used to be in 22 ounce bottles and used to cost me anywhere from like 15 to 20 dollars so the fact they're in 12 ounce bottles and are now 10 dollars a bottle i'm into it all day every day and uh, availability wherever you see firestone walker uh they're all over the place now um if you do get firestone walker in your area you probably should see that limited edition three pack i know i did and i grabbed it and i'm happy that i did so uh not much more to say about it like i said big boozy monster of a beer. It's 14%. You kind of expect that. And that's why I can't uh, detract too much from the score when I'm talking about this is boozy. That's why I only detract like 0.05 or 0.1 from the score because this is 14%. And you you can taste the alcohol. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with drinking a 14% beer and getting alcohol from it that you kind of expect it. So uh, some of these beers nowadays hide the alcohol extremely well. But once you start creeping into like the mid-teens as far as uh, alcohol is concerned, like yeah, you expect to taste the booze, so I can't knock, knock it too much for that. So if you've had this one before, let me know what you think about it. If you've had the regular 2021 vintage of uh, Parabola, let me know what you think about it. I'd be curious, like I said, to know the difference between this and the base beer from somebody who's had both. Uh, I have not had the pleasure of having this year's regular 2021 vintage, so can't really speak to that. So that's where you come in, post in the comment section, let me know. And like I said, if you see that three-pack, pick it up. Uh, it's well worth it. Again, for 10 bucks a bottle, it's well worth it all day, every day. So appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review here on the Beer Patrol. Like I said, I hope everyone's having a highly enjoyable yet safe Black Friday. And uh, I'm hoping that I can score some Bourbon County and its variants this year because like I said, missed out last year. It's kind of a bummer, but this year back in full effect, sons. Till the next one. Cheers.